Hey guys, in today's episode, everyone hates the trade token rework. Check out an exclusive Q&A with the Clash Royale World Champions. And someone got 90 wins in the Clash Royale Global Tournament using Expo. All that and more in today's episode of Clash World. Hey guys, this is Roy here, and welcome back to another episode of Clash Worlds. In this weekly show, we take a look at the most recent announcements from the Clash Royale team, the hottest topics in CR Esports, as well as what's going on in the community. Then, we'll finish off the episode by breaking down the meta and featuring my off-meta deck of the week. If you're enjoying Clash Worlds, then please leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell to get notified of every video that comes out. Also, go check me out on Twitter. I'm pretty active on there, so link will be in the description. And with that out of the way, let's get right into the first section. New in the Arena. New in the arena is where we find out about what the Supercell team has been up to this past week. Of course, the December update is now out. I'm sure you, all of you know exactly what is in the update, so I'm not really going to go that in depth into that. However, this update did come with a ton of bugs. Let's take a look at a Reddit post by Calcium001 on a pretty comprehensive list. Just to quickly go over some of the big ones, this includes just overall app instability with constant crashes, the lightning chest in tournaments seems to be bugged and unable to open, the tournament scrolling also is really sensitive, and some of the card descriptions are completely missing on several of the languages. Fortunately, however, the dev team has been working really hard to fix these issues, already going under several maintenance breaks just to fix glitches in the game. I really applaud the effort by the team here. Keep it up. Also, there's a new Reach for the Stars challenge in the game, celebrating the new update with a crazy 15 win challenge. The rewards are really good too. Now, I didn't do too hot as uh, I, I was trying to relearn how to play 2.9 and I absolutely suck at the moment, but hey, I still got some really good rewards and I'm fine with that. Keep up the challenges too, Supercell. And finally, the first Clash Royale Global Tournament has wrapped up, and the winner, Air Surfer from Team Solo Mid with a shocking 90 wins on the dot. Wow, so close to that big 100. That is just absolutely crazy. I really did think that Ruben was going to win, as he was leading for the most part of the tournament, but Air Surfer really did come in clutch at the end. Now, guess what deck Air Surfer used? 2.9 Expo Cycle. Oh man, this guy is good. Expo is back, baby, and it can really be effective. Now that's going to do it for new in the arena. It's time to check out the esports update. The esports update is a segment where we take a look at the new and rising pro players as well as recent esports competitions. Now that the CRL season for 2018 is over, there has recently been an AMA on Reddit for the winning team Nova. Let's take a look at some of the questions. T-Stuff here asks, how much money have you spent on Clash Royale total? AUK here has spent about 10 US dollars. Lil Chen here says, Before coming a pro player, I didn't spend any money, but after, I spent about $150. LC up here says, I didn't spend any money before going pro. Sometimes I'll buy some emotes, but that's all. So, as you can see, it's definitely possible to be noticed as relatively free to play players, as these three and many other pros have done. Obviously, you know, once you get signed on an esports team, you're probably gonna get like a sponsored account and stuff like that. But still, this shows that it's possible to not spend any money and still be able to get noticed, especially now with global tournaments where the free to play players can truly get recognized, it's even easier than ever. Sevens here asks, how much time do you spend practicing? Do you also have jobs or is competitive playing your source of income? AUK here says, I spend about 10 hours a day as competitive playing is my only source of income. Lil Chen, he plays a couple hours a day, sometimes 1 to 2, sometimes up to 16. <laughs> it depends. Wow, 16 hours a day of Clash, that's absolutely crazy. I make some money from streaming, but it's not as much compared to becoming a pro. Osiop says, when there are tournaments, about 8 hours a day, but when there aren't any competitions, I'd say about 4. I agree with Lil Chen, streaming doesn't bring in that much income. Sushi MMD here asks, as the world champions, do you feel like the generic 100 gems grand challenge is fairly easy to get 12 wins? LCAP, very easy. Lil Chen says, even before we were the world champions, it was still easy. Come on, man, weird flex, but okay. 
and finally, Yellow Skin asked, if Clash Royale was deleted tomorrow and never come back, what would you guys do? LC up here says, I would go work at home. My family has a farm, so maybe I'd be a farmer. Lil Chen here says, I'd take some time off and play some other games to see if I have what it takes to be a pro. I'd want to study for a bit on my own and then learn more about business. And AUK says, I'd work in a factory and date girls. Maybe I'd go to LCF's place and help them. And finally, Sean says, I'd try and work as a lawyer. I majored in law and English in college. That is definitely some very interesting information. Now, obviously, there are way more questions than just these, but I just picked my favorites. To see them all, check out the AMA on the Clash Royale Reddit. Now that we caught up with the most recent esports news, let's check out the rising rumors. Overall, the community reaction to the update is actually quite mixed. There were a lot of positives, especially over tournament reworks and the global tournaments and the new lightning chests. And seriously, props to them. These changes are great, you know, skins are absolutely great, they keep the game fresh, and we're also about to get a really nice Brawl Stars game mode as well. But there have also been a lot of criticisms. By far the biggest issue with this update is the trade token rework, requiring both players to have a trade token to trade, and also the fact that you have to pay for a trade when you have a card maxed. In fact, even Clash with Ash tweeted out, the new trade system, however, needs to be reverted. This can't be what was intended. In fact, trading is almost a standstill. In many clans, mine included, they just have so many trade requests built up just because no one has the tokens and no one wants to waste the ones they already have. Here's a really good explanation about exactly what the issue is by a Reddit user. Supercell stated that both parties having a token would not be a problem because they more than double the tokens that will be given out now. This isn't fully the case though because there are four different kinds of tokens. This requires both parties to have the exact token. If you have a common token and your buddy has a rare one, too bad, can't trade. This isn't even the worst part. I'm sure you've all seen the ridiculous number of posts regarding clan chests being filled with trade requests. This is due to the desire for getting what you want. It's far more difficult to hash out a deal if both parties want a win-win situation. The individual will now be more cautious when it comes to trade. Accepting a trade that isn't totally beneficial to you now sets you back. Previously, accepting a not totally beneficial trade only helped the other party. No one wants to spend a token on a trade that doesn't help them out. Really solid points, and I really hope that Supercell listens. The community is not too happy about this change, and honestly, me too. I honestly would appreciate at least some reply from Supercell on this topic, just, just to see what they're going to do about it. Now that we've covered the trending topics in the community, let's go ahead and break down the meta. This meta is definitely very interesting to say the least. Actually, it's relatively diverse. We've got a healthy mix of Beatdown, Control, Lava Hound, Graveyard, Three Musketeers, and also Expo to an extent. Royal Recruits may be kind of annoying, but hopefully Dex will still gradually adjust to counter those. Again, really solid meta so far, not too much I can say about it. So that's the meta for you guys, now let's check out the off meta deck of the week. That's right, in each Clash Royale episode, I'm going to be featuring one off meta deck that works in the current meta. This week's deck was submitted by It's Ya Boy Neon, and it's a Balloon Freeze Cycle deck. This deck, with its quick cycle troops, can very easily apply quick opposite lane pressure. In addition, utilizing your Inferno Tower on defense is crucial with all of your other bait ish cards. Now, the big thing about Balloon Freeze is that it is a one push deck. This means that for the most part, just one successful push will take the tower. Overall, really fun deck to play, so without further ado, let's get right into the battle. Alright, so looks like this battle is going to be against John Garka from the clan Ghost Squad SV. Good luck to him, and starting off this match, uh, we don't exactly have the best starting hand, so... Okay, looks like he's gonna go with a Mega Minion right there, so I'll, we'll obviously go in with a Dark Goblin, uh, and, uh, let's see... Oh, he's got a Hawk, so obviously Inferno Tower will go down to take that out. Now here, I'm actually gonna go in with some Spirit Goblins just to make sure that, uh, Dark Goblin will survive and hopefully get some Chip Shots. No, looks like he's gonna send in a Barbell, but Inferno Tower will go ahead and burn that thing up, so we should be just fine. Now here, uh, as we reach an Elixir, I'm gonna... 
try and wait for him to play something down uh if not i might as well just go in with a okay there's a nice so that is one air counter out of cycle so let's actually just go in with the bloom see what air counters he has and, oh wow okay he's got mega minion cycle so this guy actually has a much faster cycle than i thought he did and okay here we'll just go with lumberjack and then some guards so we'll go ahead and hopefully split uh okay nope they don't split um, kind of a misplay on my part, so unfortunately it looks like we're gonna have to take a couple of Mega Minion hits, but, uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see if he has- Oh, Skeleton Army Skull Cookie zapped that out. Ooh, we can totally freeze the tower. Okay, let's go with a freeze. Boom! Catching the Ice Wizard. We got a Lumberjack on the tower. Lumberjack survives the Bar Barrel. Oh, man, that tower is taking an absolute beating. Tower's already down to 133. We didn't even come with that freeze with the balloon. That Lumberjack just did so- much work so anyways here unfortunately that hogs didn't get quite a few hits onto the tower well played on his part uh, but we're still in a relatively big lead and here I'm gonna go in with a dark gun with the bridge so that when the lumberjack dies it'll rage up the dark gun and oh no okay <laughs> I guess that was just a complete waste of three elixir I thought the lumberjack wouldn't reach a tower so I was gonna get a rage dark goblin to try and lock it but looks like that was just a waste of three elixir, and, uh, yeah, <laughs> so, uh, as we head into double extra time, he's gonna go ahead and use a Mega Minion in the back, so I think I'm gonna go with a Balloon, that's one of his big air counters out of cycle, so, okay, he's got an Ice Wizard right there, so let's just go ahead and get an uh, Inferno Tower down for that Hog, and then we can go ahead and get a Freeze onto this stuff right there, hopefully get the Balloon onto the Tower, and, oh, no, <laughs> that Mega Minion's gonna connect onto the Tower, alright, that Tower's pretty much going down, but fortunately, we actually do take that right Tower down really low, and, uh, man, that Mega Man just did so much work right there. Uh, so, let's see here. This is actually not looking too good right here. Uh, let's see here. Okay, let's go ahead and get an Inferno Tower down for that Hog right there. Let's go ahead and get a Lumberjack down. Oh, that Lumberjack is actually doing so much damage onto the King's Tower. Uh, so here, let's go ahead and get some Spear Goblins down to take out the Skeleton Army. And I think we're fine <laughs> with about 20 seconds left in this match. Uh, so, so, yeah, things are looking pretty good. We obviously have the Inferno Tower to stop the Hog. Uh, so the Hog won't be doing any damage onto our King's Tower. Uh, we have Guards, guards are really solid, so, but anyways here, let's go with the guards balloon push, because he uses Ice Wizard, he uses Mega Minion, there's nothing in cycle, 4 seconds left, 3 seconds left, that tower is going down, nothing he can do to stop it, and we're just gonna have a relatively easy victory over this hog deck, uh, it did kinda almost choke right there, but, you know, we ended up pulling out the dub at the end. So, there we go. That's the off-mana deck of the week. I definitely recommend you guys give this deck a try. The new Freeze is actually really, really fun to play, as it can actually, like, one-shot bats and stuff like that, which is definitely a really interesting mechanic that you can try. If you want to submit your own deck to be featured, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. But unfortunately, guys, that's all I've got time for in today's video. If you enjoyed, please leave a like down below, as well as a subscription to my channel. And as always, this is Legend Array, and I'm signing off. See you guys next time. I'm